Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dr. Sia channel. In the video here today, we're going to be talking about the defense mechanism that I call disconnected thoughts. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it than the word disconnected thoughts. I'll talk about it soon. Right, so what do I mean by disconnected thoughts and how can it be a defense mechanism? So, well, what I mean by disconnected thoughts is anything where one thought is interrupted by some other process such as tangentiality or a digressing or, you know, incomplete sentences or anything like that that you notice in your patient might be things related to disconnected thoughts. And why are disconnected thoughts defense mechanisms? Well, because thoughts put together ideas and memories. Ideas and memories are related to emotions. And if you can't put together a sentence in your mind, a full coherent memory in your mind, well, then you can't have any feelings towards anybody. Now, that becomes a defense mechanism that prevents you from actually feeling the way that you feel about a person. I'll give you an example. I ask a patient of mine, so what are the problems that you want to work on here today? And then she says, oh, well, you know, I came in here to kind of work with you. My husband can be... Oh, well, but my kids are sometimes really rowdy and my doctor had a different idea about potentially, um, I have depression, I have depression and, and so on and so forth they go. Now you might quickly think to yourself, oh gosh, those seem like some negative symptoms of psychosis there or something like that, but hold off before you do. It's a very common way that the brain gets interfered with by anxiety, something we call cognitive perceptual disruption, interferes with our ability to think clearly, and by doing so prevents us from confronting our complex emotions, and by doing so maintains our symptomatic problems. Now what you can help that patient do there is string together complete sentences. But by doing that, you're going to need to interrupt them and frequently ask them about the first or initial or the emotion that they had, sorry, the emotion laden memory or thought that they had. In that example, it would be patient comes in. And as I said before, she, uh, she starts out with saying, well, my partner can be, you know, and then moves on to the kids. You could say, okay, hold on, I noticed that you're kind of jumping from partner to your children, to your doctor, and all of these are really important. And I also noticed that you kind of went on talking about your depression. Now, right here, right now, you know, do you notice anything within you here that you want to work with me on? You know, they might say, yeah, I'm really anxious. You might say, okay, so that anxiety that you're having here right now, should we work on that right now? Yes, we can work on that now. How do you notice that anxiety? I notice it like this in my body. Okay. And is that anxiety coming up for you here right now as you intend on talking about your partner? Yes, it does. I wanted to talk about my husband, but then I got really anxious. Okay. Can you tell me more about your husband again? Can you go back to tell me about that? Can you go back to tell me about your partner, for example? Yeah, well, you know, he can be really... Um, but then my doctor said that the anxiety... Well, just hold on there for a little second. Did you notice there again that you were started talking about your partner, but then you went over to the doctor? Can we just try to focus there on what happens there with your partner? You said that he can be really... And in that way, you help the person string together sentences to connect their thoughts and as they do, their anxiety will go up and then you can help them regulate the anxiety that it comes up about that and over time, they'll be more clear, they'll be more pronounced, people around them will say things like, oh gosh, I, you know, you're, you're, it's so much easier to understand, you know, it'd be easier for you to understand the patient. The patient will feel better about themselves because they, it makes them feel like they're easier to understand as well and of course, that gives you the basis of what you need to actually confront those complex feelings underneath it all. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, press that like button. Don't forget to press the like button because otherwise this video might disappear behind the ether of videos that exist on YouTube on psychology. So please do, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Please leave a comment if you like as well. If you have any requests, let me know. Thank you very much. I'll see you again next time.